Okay, roster deadline has now been passed, and the Flames have their opening day roster. We've got a pretty good idea as to what opening night lines are going to look like. And now the season is really around the corner. Preseason done. We beat that to death. All the training camp battles have pretty much played themselves out. And now it's all about the start of the regular season. Welcome to Flames Nation Live. What's going on, friends? It's Steinberg with you on a Sunday afternoon, a few minutes after the Flames have finalized their roster. Uh, thanks for being with us. Uh, see who's in first on the live chat. Start getting your questions and comments in on the live chat after the Flames announce their opening day roster. Um, there is at least one interesting absentee, but I don't know if we need to read too much into that absentee. We'll tell you about that in just a second. But first, we'll tell you that Flames Nation Live brought to you by our friends at DoorDash, where you can still use that promo code. If you go download the app and create the account, then uh, on your first order, use the promo code FNLIVEDD. By doing that, you're going to get yourself 10%, sorry, 25% off your first order and free delivery. One more time, don't not, download of the app, create the account, and then use the promo code FNLIVEDD. Okay, so here's what's going on. Get your comments and questions in on the live chat. Thoughts on opening day lines. Thoughts on what you make of the opening day roster. You can get all that on if you're with us on the Facebook Live live chat right now. But here is what we're talking about in terms of the opening day roster. The Flames announced this on Sunday afternoon. Um, actually, just before the roster deadline passed, they uh, brought this in. Um, and, and so they are going with one player fewer than the roster maximum. You can have a 23-person, 23-player active roster. They're going with 22 on their opening day roster. And seven defensemen, 13 forwards, and, of course, the two goaltenders. Don't think there's any surprises in terms of who the goaltenders are. In fact, after the waiver situation figured itself out, over the weekend, and Yusuf Alamaki was claimed on Sunday, and the other players went through, Zahorna and Gilbert, they were assigned. Once we knew all that, the actual roster itself was pretty much set in stone. The only thing we didn't know was whether or not Michael Stone was going to be on this opening day roster. The answer to that question, as of right now, is no, but that doesn't mean that Michael Stone won't be added or can't be added or won't be given a contract at any time. The Flames are in a very advantageous position when it comes to Stone, and more on him, and, and more on why, you know, I think there's pretty good reason to believe he's going to get a contract and he's going to be part of this conversation conversation but there's no because Michael doesn't want to be playing anywhere but Calgary and because he very much wants to be a member of the Flames and stay in the city the Flames are in a little bit of an advantageous situation they're very lucky in that regard and I don't believe that they should take advantage or do anything like that with Stone but they are in a very advantageous situation because of because of the situation and because Michael only wants to play here. So what I mean by that is I just showed you the roster, but what about the lines that we're seeing at practice? And this is Sunday, Sunday morning. Oh, sorry, not Sunday. It's a Monday. Scratch all I said about Sunday. It's Thanksgiving Monday. Everything is all messed up in my head. I apologize for that. It is very clearly a Monday. Um, and the only reason I clued on in on that is because it says Monday on my tweet there. But that is what things look like when it comes to practice. And that's how they've looked like at practice for a little while now. Michael Stone on the third pairing with Nikita Zadorov, Connor Mackey, and Nick Malash as your fourth pairing is the number seven and eight. So because of that, I think that you can infer there's probably good reason to believe that even though he's not on the opening day roster, that he's probably going to end up getting a contract and we're probably going to see him sign to some sort of deal. Now, they do have some options, right? They do have a couple of uh, couple of options to, um, to, to work through. I guess there are really three options when it comes to Michael Stone and what the Flames could do. Number one, they could just sign him to the one-way contract and have him on a regular NHL deal, which the way he's performed over the last couple of seasons in spot duty, the way he's looked in this training camp, the way he's performed in the preseason, I don't think it would be crazy to suggest that uh, we're talking about him getting a one-way NHL contract. So there's that, and that could very well happen. 
if that doesn't happen, um, they could go two-way. And a two-way deal would really, you know, all it would really do would pay him a different dollar figure at the NHL level or the American League level, which I guess it could be a two-way deal if they wanted to be. The only thing that I wonder about and have wondered about, and we'll probably find out these answers coming up very shortly, but the only thing I wonder about is whether or not they go the American League route with him uh, and and put him on an American League deal and then convert that at some point to an NHL deal when they need him. The problem is, again, if I show you those lines, he's been skating for the last number of days on the third pairing, and I don't know, I think there's a pretty decent chance that you could be making the argument he's trending towards being on the opening in the opening night lineup. And if that is the case... Obviously, he'll need an NHL contract and not an AHL deal. Long story short, just because he's not on their opening day roster and just because he's not, there is a space for him or a spot for him as they're only at 22 right now. With Oliver Shillington being on the non-roster, and we'll get to that in just a second, but there is a spot for him. There's probably cap room for him as well if he comes in at pretty close to an NHL minimum deal. So I... I believe that, I mean, they've got some options when it comes to Stone. There's, it's not like they are in a bad spot or it's not like they're in danger of him going elsewhere as it stands right now. That's just, it's, it's one of the good things that they just happen to have when it comes to Michael Stone's situation. It's a, it's a good spot for the Flames to be in. They're very fortunate that Michael has chosen to want to stay in Calgary and that's where he wants to be. And now we'll see how that ends up playing out. But I don't think it would be a shock to anyone if he's in the opening night in the opening night lineup and one of the six defensemen they roll with on Thursday night against the Colorado Avalanche. And obviously for that to happen, he's going to need a contract. The other interesting thing, again, no comments uh, as of yet. I, I don't know if the comment section's not working or if we're just uh, a quiet bunch, and that's fine too. Um, if you're just uh, watching and chilling, that's perfectly fine. But if you want to get some uh, comments in on the interactive se- section of Flames uh, of, of Facebook Live, feel free, um, and, and we can absolutely do that. Um, and uh, get some conversation going there. And uh, Okay, we, the, the, the comment section is working because Kevin is the first one in, and uh, that's fine if we don't get any, no problem. Um, but the other interesting part is that Oliver Shillington is listed as a non-roster player. It's Shillington along with Emilio Pedersen and Martin Pospisil are listed as non-roster players for the Flames, and that gives them some options as well. Looks like they're going to be able to get some sort of injury exemption for Oliver Shillington, as he is not with the team right now for personal reasons. And again, the number one thing is we wish Oliver the best, and and he's uh, able to um, he's he's able to work through whatever's going on in his life right now. And and there's there's something serious going on, and he's got he's got some things to deal with right now. And so hopefully uh, he's back as soon as humanly possible. But whenever he's back, it'll be because he's ready. And that's the most important thing when it comes to Oliver. So the second part then is how does that affect their cap? And because he is on uh, listed as, as non-roster injured, um, they will have some ability, I believe, to if they want to get some injury credit in that regard. So um, they, they could go the uh, – from, from all of what I understand um, – they could go the LTIR route at some point if they needed to with Shillington. But if they don't need to, then, then they won't necessarily go that way. They don't have to, but they, they, they it sounds like they're going to have that option at least to start the season as we wait for Oliver to be closer to returning. Uh, okay, on the comment section, let's get to it. Nicholas says, do you think they'll take the LTIR, uh, LTIR route with Shillington? They have that option as, as far as I know. And just... That, that is something that they could do if they end up feeling that they need the cap space. But as it stands right now, they are under the cap and uh, they, they are cap compliant. So if they need to, and if that turns into something that becomes a necessity, they've got that option. But it isn't something that they are that they have to do. He is listed as injured non-roster as it stands right now. Um, Jesse says, just joined. What's going on with Stone at practice but not on the opening day roster? Yeah, he's been practicing with the team. He just doesn't have a contract as it stands right now. And and I think that there's a pretty decent chance that he will get a contract at some point here um, in the coming days. And... He's going to need one to be in the opening night roster or on the opening in the opening night lineup rather, and all signs are pointing towards that being the case. And hey, good on him if that ends up being the case, uh, because he's earned it. 
he's just not on it right now. And that's probably because it gives him a little bit more time to work out their cap situation. Again, because he is only wanting to play in Calgary and because he's committed to play in Calgary and nowhere else, uh, and, and there's not really a risk of him going elsewhere, they do have some flexibility in that regard. Um, Jim says, happy Thanksgiving to all. Uh, I think the Stone deal will get done. Um, maybe it's term he's trying to leverage, and I don't know. Um, it, it could just be as, as much a, a clerical thing. It could mu- as much be a flexibility thing for the Flames um, when it comes to why he's not on a contract as of right now. This says, who has to underperform first before Pelche Phillips, another prospect, gets brought up? Um, that is from Cody. Well, Cody, the thing I would say is, just based on what I know about this coach, about head coach Daryl Sutter, who, by the way, over the weekend signed a two-year contract extension, so he's the head coach for three more years, including this one. From from what I know about this head coach, and this is, you can agree or disagree with it, that's, that's fully your prerogative, and there, there's always, I think, interesting conversation and debate that can come from this, but he puts a lot of faith in veteran players, and I don't know if, anybody necessarily is going to have to underperform, I think it might be as simple as there's going to have to be an injury. Let's see how Lewis does on that line. I think they're putting Lewis on that line with Backlund and Coleman because they're looking at that line to be very much a shutdown defensive specialist line. We'll see how that plays out. If And I think that could change matchup to matchup. I also think Rooney's got an opportunity of going there. And that's how when, when Rooney moves, if Rooney moves rather, to that number three left wing spot, that's where I think Adam Ruzicka has the opportunity to draw into the lineup and be the number four center. And then maybe a guy like Richie comes out and you've got Lewis and Lucic on the line with, with Adam Ruzicka. I think that is very much a possibility. And I think the fact that uh, Ruzicka needed waivers was a big reason why he's on the opening day roster. And I thought he got better as training camp went along. He was not, um, he was not a standout in the first half of it, but in the second half, I thought he became a much better player for the Flames and his preseason work became much better. So, you know, they've got they've got options in that regard too. Um, but I think if, if I'm just reading tea leaves and what I know, my guess is it, it probably will be injury before a guy like that gets a call, Cody. Um, this from Tomasi says, Pat, how many games do you think it takes to know if a line's clicking or not? Thinking of lines one and two and how much Daryl will let them play together. I think he'll give it a little bit of time. Um, the fact that Huberdeau, Toffoli, and Lindholm have been together the entire camp, I think that gives you an idea that they want to make this work. And, and if it's not clicking two days into the regular season, I don't think they're going to break it up. Now, if it's, you know, late November and it's still clearly not a fit, then I think that changes things. But I think in the early going, there's a very good chance that they give that line and the Kadri line with Manjapani and Dubé, they give that an opportunity to play out as well. So I, I think that there is, I, I think they're going to let both of those lines get their legs and see how they end up performing when pucks are flying for real and when games matter for real. That's just my gut. Obviously, don't know that for sure. Um, but that would be my gut. Uh, Sean says on our live chat, um, are they running four forwards and a defenseman on the first power play unit or two defensemen? They're running four forwards. So the first power play unit has the four forwards, Kadri, Toffoli, Huberdeau, Lindholm, and they kind of use them all in different spots. Sometimes Kadri, sometimes Kadri's the bumper, sometimes Lindholm's the bumper, sometimes Toffoli's the net front guy, sometimes Lindholm's the net front guy, sometimes Lindholm's working on the off wall, sometimes Toffoli is. Um, so they, they, they've, they kind of have a lot of different looks for that number one power play unit. So it's those four forwards and Rasmus Anderson as the power play one quarter pack. And then I, they've run a number of different forwards on the second power play unit, but the one that has been most frequent is Manjapani, Backlund, and Dubé. And they've had Lucic sometimes on there too, but they've always had the same two D men back there. So the second power play unit's been three forwards, two D, and that's been um, Uyghur and Hannafin have been the two D. And then mostly Backlund, Dubé, Manjapani have been the forwards, but you've seen a little bit of Lucic sometimes, you've seen a little bit of Coleman sometimes, but that the, the three guys that I mentioned off the top have been the most frequent guys on PP2 for the Flames. So we'll see how uh, we'll see how that 
that plays out as the year goes along. But I, I think that that number one power play unit is going to be given time to work itself out. Um, this says, who should they go after for a top six, six winger through the trade route? Well, a lot of people, I don't, I have not, I have not targeted somebody myself. Um, I do know that a number of people have texted in or called in on the Flames Talk post game show and have talked about, um, have talked a lot about Josh Anderson in Montreal. I get why there is that fascination with the player. I do. And I don't even think he's a bad player. I just, I wouldn't be paying through the nose for a guy like Anderson, mainly because I just don't love that contract. The five and a half million dollar cap it is whatever. It's more the length remaining on the contract. He's got what five years I think left on the deal, including this year. That's what scares me off. I like I like Anderson as a player. I do. I think he's a pretty decent hockey player when he's healthy. But the contract and the fact that he's had trouble staying healthy over the last number of years does scare me off a little bit. So I would not be paying premiums for him. But it's an interesting name. That'd be one that would definitely fit the bill. Top six or middle six right winger with a right shot. Yeah, Corey, that, that would be an interesting one to me. Um, but again, it would have to be at a very certain price. Um, so that's uh, that's kind of where, where I'm at when it comes. That, that's one of the names anyway. You know, I like the idea of Pugliarvi in Edmonton. Some Flames fans get mad at me when I say that. I just think he's a good player. But I don't think there's any way in hell that you're seeing the Flames and Oilers spark up trade conversations, knowing how good a chance there is that these two teams are meeting in the playoffs for the next few years, or at the very least, these two teams are fighting it out um, at the top or the top end of the Pacific Division for the next couple of years. I'm not holding my breath on a Flames-Oilers trade. It's one thing when the two teams are bad, it's another thing when the teams are uh, both good, and it sure does feel like this is going to be a year where both the Flames and the Oilers are good. Thanks for being with us on a Monday, not Sunday. You weren't going crazy. I'm just a dummy. Uh, it is a Monday edition of uh, Flames Nation Live, brought to you by DoorDash. FN Live DD is the promo code. Go download the app, create the account, and use that code for 25% off and free delivery on your first order. Always brought to you, Flames Nation Live, by our friends at DoorDash. Uh, okay, opening day roster is set. we got a pretty good idea as to what the opening night lineup is shaping up to be. That's on Thursday. The NHL regular season starts on Tuesday. Oof. Well, it's already started. But it starts in North America on Tuesday, and you get, like, multiple games on Tuesday. Uh, it's, it's right around the corner, friends. Thanks for being with us. Enjoy the week. Um, check out uh, check out Barn Burner with the boys, and check out Flames Talk on uh, Apple, Spotify, Google, Amazon. Lots of Flames content for you as the season is getting going. And, uh, yeah, looking forward to Thursday night, 7.30 at the Scotiabank Saddledome and on Sportsnet 960, the fan for Calgary and the defending Stanley Cup champion, Colorado Avalanche. Uh, be well, stay safe, be kind to one another. We'll talk to you soon on Flames Nation Live. My name is Pat from Sportsnet 960, the fan. That'll do it for this Monday edition. We'll talk to you later this week on Flames Nation Live, brought to you by DoorDash. Be well.